<laughs> I'm laughing because <laughs> this is the first time I've gone live um, where you're seeing me. Usually I don't mind doing anything if I'm on the working on the paintings, but to see me live, to see my photo in here, <laughs> that is weird, okay? So because of that, um, first of all, I want to welcome you all, and I am so appreciative of you even being here. And as an artist, I don't care if you haven't done anything and you're thinking about being an artist or if you've spent your lifetime like I have in the arts, I am so thrilled you're here. I love to celebrate everyone because we are all artists. And there's no judgment about the work you do, whether you're school learned or self-taught. It doesn't matter. And the most important thing is to, one, don't judge yourself. That is an impossible task. I know <clears throat> we're all working on that forever, but just encouragement, encouragement. I see people are coming on, but I'm just going to do my thing, which is how I've done from the beginning. I'm just going to be myself and try to answer as many questions as possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before I do, I have to show you this. I'm going to give you, this is what I look at. <laughs> look, this, I'm going to start over here. This is my studio in Bainbridge. Look at all the lights. Look at my studio. This is all geared towards filming for the Academy. Oh, and look over there on the door. Those are my two granddaughters. Two of my granddaughters drew that. So every time before a camera goes on at all, I look at that and smile and laugh and know that they're here. So, and we've painted the whole thing black because it's great um, to be able to have a dark background. That's one of the million things we learned by doing all this. <clears throat> so, wow, lots of people here. Make me kind of <laughs> nervous. Anyway, I am here to answer every possible question. Doesn't matter if it's art related, if it's studio related, if it's painting related, if it's life related, or if it's personal related. I'm an open book. So whatever you want to know, ask me. I am going to start by, I had a few people who asked me, sent me some questions. So I'm going to answer those first. Cheryl sent me, what is the best technique to glue my collage papers down? Well, I use, let me show you. I use this. This is medium, medium. It's thin. You can use gloss or here. You can use gloss or matte, but it is medium and that's thinner. And or you can always use if you don't want to even think about whether it's the thin or not thin. The other one is um, gel, regular gel gloss. That is for a, a thicker, like a thicker um, collage piece. And I'm going to show you, I have oh, so many things I want to share. This is going to be kind of fun. Okay, so that is for, that is for that one question. Thank you, Cheryl. That's um, collage. And so if you even are concerned or, or just curious, do the, do the gel, do the gel. And if you want, well, I'm going to show you, know, let me, I brought all the pieces that we did, that I did on paper on the three day collage thing. And I want to show you, um, basically I did these with matte because I knew I was going to film it and I didn't want the, I didn't want to, um, do the shiny. So I use the mat. And afterwards with collage, I actually go over the whole final thing with a mat, um, you know, to seal the whole thing because it is paper and it's, it will keep it. And the, pa the watercolor paper, this is really good watercolor paper. It's thick. It's wonderful. It's a little curvy. You can see it's, it's kind of warped a little bit and that's fine. All I do is I can keep these on, um, if I, if I don't sell, actually a couple of these have already sold. But if whatever's left, I just, I put it on something and weight it down and just keep a big heavy book on it. So then it's flat. And I also brought, look at this. 
Here's just a mat if you wanted a mat, wanted it in a mat. That's what I did. And then you can um, do that. So these can actually be, the things that we did could actually be um, just samples or, or they can be, you know, just having fun or they could be finished pieces. When I posted them up, boy, a lot of people did it, which reminds me, if you put your things up on Instagram as an artist, you have a great chance of selling it, you know, but anyway, you have to learn how to do all that. And you just start, you just start. And if you, I basically, I teach all of this in the Academy, the Art with Adele Academy, which is going to open next week on Monday, January 24th. So anyway, that's, those are these. Let me see if I can get to another question. So let me put this back here. Oh, and this one, a lot of people asked about, this is the board. This is great because it's flat. It's not going to warp. And I used, several people asked, what glue did I use for the board? Because they had trouble. Same thing. And I didn't even use the gel on this one. I used the medium. But I went over, I put tons of it on and then went over it and then made sure it was flat. And, and so, and then I went over with another coat, final coat, and it's great. It's great. If you know of another glue that you like or want to do, put it in the comments or whatever. If there are comments, use the look. Okay. Hey, Ann. <laughs> if you see Ann commenting, she is my right-hand assistant, and I couldn't do any of this without her. She is helps everyone in the academy. Anne at artwithadele.com. She's fabulous, and she's an, Anne, you're a fabulous artist. You know everything about the academy, and so it's awesome. How can you make a, oh, Carolyn, how can you make acrylic many thicker, more plastic look. So the, the problem is that the more acrylic I take, the more risk it will be that it will break. Hmm, I'm not sure I understand that question, but um, make acrylic. Let me see if I can, oh yeah, okay, I can bring this down. Thicker to make a plastic look. I'm not sure, I'm sorry, I don't understand that question. Wait, here's someone else. Do you think having a website is essential? You know, the answer to that is yes and no. Yes, if you want to sell, again, it's so much of this is around what your goal is, what you want to do. If you're doing it for fun and you don't care about sales, you don't need a website. Um, if you, but I do think it's great to just have a presence on social media because it's so great to just share your work. And there's so many people out there that it's just, you know, the bottom line is just to create the work because you're just bringing yourself each each painting you do brings a piece of yourself with it so you're just filling the world with these wonderful gems that'll last a lifetime so just if it, so anyway let me get back <laughs> I get distracted so if you a website yes if you're really interested in selling no if you don't need to do that you know I mean all of these things take time their work with social media, sometimes I feel like I just want to forget social media. Um, but I see some funny things. I actually use social media not to look at other people's work, but I love the reels. Some of them are so funny. I look for fun and entertainment on it. That's all I use it for. <laughs> so, okay, let's see. Let me see if I have any other questions. Oh, how much do you sell the collage pieces for? The collage pieces, it depends on the size. The 8 by 10s are, <clears throat> gosh, I, you know what? I have a page because I forget how much everything is. I'm so not oriented towards price. Um, so I have to write it down so I remember. I would have to actually go look and see how much it is. Um, and, and someone did ask, what about do you price um, collages differently than paintings? When I first started, I did place, do the collages lower than the paintings. And now, no, they are the same to me. There are lots of different opinions about everything. But for me, I think they're just the same. I, I love them like this. I sometimes prefer collage. So it's every bit as worth whatever the price is for either one. Do you use liquid acrylics also? I definitely use liquid acrylics. I, when I first started, I used the heavy body. 
actually, I, I started so long ago, they didn't even have the <laughs> fluid. And so that's all I did. But I noticed that my paintings were, the paint was opaque and thick. And it's like, I didn't want that. I wanted to have more layers and see through. And so, um, so once the fluids came out and I experimented, I didn't go back. And sometimes I use the heavy bodies if I want to have a painting, if like for variety, and I want to put something thick on the painting um, at the end, I or even in the middle, if I do a lot of thin layers, I'm always thinking about variety. If I do thin, I've trained myself. It's like automatically think of the opposite. I'm going to do thin. Oh, I need to do thick. Okay. If I do large, oh, I need to do small. And if you train yourself from the beginning, it's so much easier then all your painting is automatic. It's just like, it's just rote in your head. I can't help myself but think that it's automatic. But train yourself in the beginning and think about opposites. So anyway, uh, let me see. I think that, let me go down here. Okay. Yes, glue is for, okay. Let's see. If you put on board, does it need glass over it? Does it need glass? No, no. Um, for instance, I never really used, this is the canvas board. I never really used this before, but, and I, just to say, I do a lot of research, a lot of research. I want to know everything and anything. And so I saw a couple artists using this and then putting them right underneath um, one of a frame. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to try that because these are easy. Look how thin. These are easy to stack. You can have a ton of them. They're very inexpensive. I don't know how high, how big they go up. I have different sizes. And if you're going to sell these, if you do a series and you want to sell these, these are easy to ship. So I think of all that before I never used to, <laughs> but I think of that. So um, I don't, you don't need to put glass over it. Okay. Let me see. Why do you use gloss mixed into the paint in all the layers? I use gloss constantly um, because I love the, the viscosity of it. It's just more fluid. It's almost like oil and it flows well. And so I've already got, that's why I don't seal my paintings with anything else because I don't need to. It's in pretty much everything I do. I mean, I put, if you're in the academy, you see me, I put the paint on, then I squ on just all over, I do the gloss medium. And the reason I do gloss, there is a reason. If you use gloss or matte gloss, if you're going to do multi layers and you want to see clearly the layers underneath, or you don't even know if you want to, but if you know that, if you use gloss, it dries totally clear. If you use matte, then as a last resort, you could, I mean, the final coat, you could do matte if you don't like the gloss, but if you use the matte throughout the layers, then it's going to get cloudier. It's not crystal clear. So say you want to do layers, but you want the final piece to be matte. Well, then you use um, gloss throughout the whole painting process, and at the very end, you use matte, which is exactly what I did on all of these this way. So anyway, there's that. Um, yeah. Oh, who's that? Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, hi, everyone. Uh, found interesting. Uh, looked at blue in the magazines and then put them together. I was amazed how they looked blue there and now purple or gray. Absolutely. Every blue is going to look different. Like I tore some out that looked blue in the magazine. And when I put them next to other blues, they were green, which, and that's one of the things that's so cool because everyone sees differently. And just because of this, listen to this, I study, I love science. And so I study everything like how do our eyes work? What's behind all that? How do we even see? I could see a color and say, oh, here's a blue. And my husband or my kids would go, oh, that's green. We see differently. Every person sees a little differently. So just because you think it's one color, it doesn't mean somebody else sees the exact same color. And you know what? This is really about you. That's the thing. I actually have done the gamut <laughs> with, I have been around this so long. I've been doing this before. I mean, when we sent slides out to the galleries, I have tons and tons of slides. 
those of you who are getting started now, you're so lucky because it really is the easiest time ever, ever to expose your work or just share your work. Just everybody wants to see it. And especially with COVID, we can't see people across the world. So just to be able to see, oh gosh, like my granddaughter, you know, they do um, things for me in New Orleans. Um, I'm in Bainbridge right now, but if I'm not with them or in Los Angeles, they will put it on, on their, you know, on the social media and I get to see it. So it's just use Instagram I've learned at first I was serious and did this, that, or the other and tried to follow all the rules and studied it. And now it's just like, just do your best, have fun with it. Because if you do it strict, like I did, you'll be so tired of it and just like, ah, it's too much. You can't chase it. You just put up what's fun and easy for you. Let me go down and see if I've got any other questions here. From the third lesson, hard. First class went well. Yeah, the third, well, you know, I would suggest do these lessons, one, two, and three, over again. That's one thing I tell the people, the members in Art with Academy. Do everything multiple times. Because if you do it multiple times, you're just getting started with the first one. It's like, okay, I'm just learning how to, how do I do the glue, the technical part, or does this work? Or what happens, what do I do if I do the watercolor or put the paint on the paper and it's buckled? Just think of the first one as, like just total trial and error. The second one is still trial and error, but you're going to learn something and you're going to look at the first ones and say, oh, I'm excited by that. I love that. I want to try that again. Or maybe I need to do something different. So keep going and doing the same thing over and over and over because every time you do it, it's going to be different and you're going to learn. So do everything multiple, multiple times. How do I change acrylic paint in tubes to fluid? Golden is very expensive. But this is the thing about golden. Golden, the, it's so highly pigmented that you could get the heavy body and put water or put the, the medium on it and it will thin it out. And so it goes a long way. You do not have to, you know, the the, the cheaper versions are, I don't even use them anymore. So I, I don't know too much about them, but um, with golden, the pigment is just saturated with color. So it goes a long way. Just don't use it straight and just a little, you know, thin it out and you can thin with medium. I thin with medium and a little bit of water, but even test yourself, like put some of it on and, um, this is the best thing to do. And then just get a, a practice sheet and, and put a lot of water on and then do it and, you know, do it on your paper and then write down heavy body with lots of water. And then if you do medium, heavy body with a little medium, heavy body with a lot of medium and with the same color on all those, then you'll be able to see, you'll have that as like a test and you'll see how much to add and what you like. That's what I would do. Add gloss media and bit of water. Yep. Do you use acrylic varnish over collage? Nope. I use, oh, I don't varnish it. Well, I seal it through the, um, I seal it collage only um, because of the, because of the papers. Um, you don't have to, I guess, but I just like to give it a final coat. So I do it with the medium. I do it with matte medium or gloss medium, depending on what I do. If something, if I want to bring out the color in something, if it's a real neutral painting um, or collage piece uh, and I want to bring out the color, it kind of looks like, you know, it's very subtle with subtlety. I'll use the gloss because it really brings out the contrast in the colors and everything. So that's what I use. Let's see, when selling on website, best to sell just a release at a time, best to avoid putting all inventory up on one site. Lauren, okay, this is what I've learned. First of all, I've done all of it. <laughs> I like to experiment. The only way you know anything is by experimenting. So I did it all at one time. I had a store with everything in it and every now and then I'd make a sale. But the best way that I've learned through my experience and the people that I know who are artists and the people that I watch and research, the best way to sell, the best opportunity is this. Sell in the limited times and only those times. For, and before that, show, build up that you're going to do it. Don't just like all of a sudden put, oh, I've got five paintings. You know, people want to know. They want to watch what you're doing. So the weeks before, like if you're planning out um, the year 
and I do planning out the year. Like if I'm going to release something, say I want to release a bunch of things in February. Then in January, the two weeks before on social media, I will just, or if you have an email list and you're going to send it, this is what I would do. So then you prepare them, you take photos or reels or videos of you working on those pieces. And then people can see you working and it gets them excited. And so then you can announce, I'm going to open these, I'm going to offer them on this day. And so that's what I would do. If you have them all the time, I mean, I did have that. I did have a shop and I took it off. On my website because unless you're marketing it and showing it and promoting it very few people are just going to stumble across it it might happen but that's the exception so that's the best way to sell when you collage on canvas is it better to use thicker paper or does copy or paper hold up okay you know what i use copy paper i don't think i mean the watercolor paper or the archive okay this is my thing about archival or newsprint and all that if I care that it's around for a hundred years, well, I don't care. You know, I mean, who is going to look at it in a hundred years? Maybe. I mean, all these famous artists from a hundred years and hundreds of years ago, their paintings are kind of crackling from the oil. But does that lower the um, the value? No. And, and except for newsprint. Uh, because my, and I know this because my mother painted a lot on newsprint because she didn't have much money. And so it did deteriorate and it did crumble and kind of fall apart. So that I wouldn't use for long, for long term. If you want to just play with it, that's fine. But in, as far as long term, <clears throat> excuse me, I wouldn't use that. But pretty much everything else. There's no, you know, with the collages, I love ordering old papers from journals from like a hundred years ago on Etsy or eBay. I'm going to, I use those in my work all the time. So it, as far as collage, just use anything but newsprint. Okay. Let's see. All right. Is there anywhere I can hear more about you merging art and therapy, social work? Oh yeah. Fellow artists here feeling so, yeah, burnout carry and wanted to do more art. I don't know if any of you know, or many of you know, but I am um, all, a certified social worker. And the reason I did that, when I got divorced, I wanted to, way back in the day, I needed to have a living. I, I couldn't just, at that point, I was doing my art. That was like 25 years ago. But I didn't want to, um, I, I knew I couldn't earn a living at it right then. I went from having a husband to help support me to, I'm it. I'm it. So that's when I really dove in and I needed to have something else as a backup. And so I went to school um, for social work at Tulane University and got my master's to help. The goal was to help other artists, I mean, to help other parents. I have a diabetic child and it was totally a game changer and there was no support and it was really, really hard. So that was my goal. I wanted to help other people adjust to that. And once I got that, I worked with a lot of people and the and I learned so much about the uh, mindset and just having fun and not taking things so seriously because it can it can give you health problems. It can just, you know, not if you're not having fun with something and you're afraid you're going to make a mistake or you tell yourself, you know, I'm not good, I'm not good, I'm not good, that's going to stop you with anything, with art, with sports, with anything you do. So uh, we really have to work on encouraging ourselves. Like, what do you like about it? For instance, <laughs> I am going to reward myself after, look, this is not typical me. I am almost 70 and I love being older. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this at my age, but I love it. But this is all like, this is the first time I've gone live answering questions. And so I'm going to definitely do it more because I love seeing it straight for you all. But that's where, oh, so I'm going to go treat myself to something as a, uh, I don't know what it is. It might be flowers. It might be something tangible because I love retail therapy and I never buy anything. So just to say good for you good for me. I was able to accomplish this, you know, and it doesn't mean it had to be perfect. I've made tons of mistakes and I actually embrace the mistakes because that's learning and laughing at yourself. And the more mistakes you make, then you're not afraid to make more mistakes. If you never make a mistake or don't allow yourself to make a mistake, you're totally fearful of making a mistake. So 
make mistakes and learn how to to problem solve because art is all about problem solving. It's not a mistake. It's just that, okay, that didn't work like I wanted or it didn't turn out like I wanted. And then you problem solve, plan A, B, C, D, and so on. And you just experiment. So it's not a mistake. It just didn't turn out how you wanted. And the social work um, really helped me, really got me to really think about that on a much deeper level. So anyway, do you think writing a piece with every painting posted on is worth it? Writing a piece with every painting. Oh, you mean the captions, um, Sandra. Captions. As far as captions, I mean, okay, so my research, the captions are really important. They say, the, the things say, I just think that oh, it's exhausting. And do, again, whatever you know, whatever you want. I basically love telling little stories about things. And so everything we have, if you look at any photo in your millions or thousands of photos in your phone, you will see, you could create a caption for that. There's a story behind everything. Like if, for instance, for a painting, oh, I tried to do this, but I ended up blah, blah, blah. I tried this and it didn't work. The glue didn't work or it buckled too much. So, you know, People love to see your humanness, your authenticity, and just a little story behind it. That's it. That's what I do. I kind of challenge myself to go through and I scroll through my photos and just stop and pick one and say, okay, create a story around this one. There always is one. <laughs> oh, let's see. Printer pay. Okay, there's Anne. Thank you. Anne's going to be Anne Rowe, R O U X. I find last week's, I was busy. Yes, last week's video, first of all, if you're in the Academy, and I'll tell you more about this, the Art with the Dell Academy, but if you're in it, I've already uploaded it. It's in the Academy. You can also see the three last week on my YouTube channel, which is Adele Sipiston. Um, and then it's also in IGTV. So it's everywhere. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm a newbie to painting and overwhelmed. Adela. Where do I start to create my first piece? Oh, that is so great. You, the beginners are the best because they, you don't have systems and rules in place yet. I would say the first thing to do is get out whatever you have. Do not buy lots of paint. Buy one red, one blue, one yellow, a black and a white and start mixing and play with mixing because that's kind of the fun thing. You can do it with, and, and what you can do is once you mix it, instead of just having it, where are you going to put it? Put it on some paper. So you can basically later use it as collage. But I just start mixing. And, and whatever, if you have materials, if you have um, any materials, it could be pencils, pens, go around your house. I mean, you don't need to spend a lot on, on materials. And I mean, I actually like not having a lot of materials because it's more of a challenge. It's more of a challenge and you work not harder, but better. You, you, it's easier to problem solve. Like, oh, okay. Once you get to know these, like, then you ask yourself, oh, how, what if I did this? And what if I did this? And just say, what if I do this? And let's see what happens and have it open-minded. So that's what I would say. Start with just five colors, mix them on a palette. It can be even freezer paper. And then just paint them on some, um, what do you call it? Some printer paper. That's what I would do. Okay, let's see. Okay. Do you use a brush or sponge brush to put it on? I don't use a sponge brush ever. I'll show you what I use. Oh, well, I use my favorite. I have all this. I love these nylon brushes. I have, let me show you. This is my box. This is all the brushes I have, and I use them all. So, for instance, this, this, I, I use them in different you know, you can get, they're not expensive um, and they don't show the brushwork as much. But if you want to show the brushwork with these, then you can by just thinning them out with water. But I you can tell these are, um, I love round bristle brushes, almost the best. I don't know why. Let's see. So I use the nylons. They come in a pack like of three different ones for hardly anything. And then you can get a variety of the rounds, all of them. That's what I use. So I basically put them on with a brush or I put them on with my palette knife. This is the only palette knife I use. I love it. 
And so it has this edge, this edge, and you can draw with it. And um, I love it because it's. I like the width of this. Or you can use, um, wow, just go around and do, try and experiment with lots of marks. That's what I did. Can I see last week's free live? Yes, it's on, on YouTube. Do you name each of your works? No, I used to. <laughs> and then I literally would sit down and there were so many that I was doing and I belonged to tons of galleries. So I couldn't think of the names of all of them. Hundreds and hundreds. I mean, at a certain point, you're like, oh, what? And so this is how, what I did. My paintings were and are still based on the re the abstracts are based on sections of walls. Like if you took like a whole wall that is like old walls. I grew up in New Orleans. So the patina and the age of all the walls was so interesting. I would literally take photographs of it and study it, the layers and layers and layers, and even the shapes. So I would take... Um, so because my paintings were sections of those walls, I thought, well, I'm going to do sections of a sentence. So I would go through books and just read something, you know, look at it and then just like pick out two or three words anywhere on the page. And that sounded good to me. And I would write them down as a list. So I had this li going list, running list of all the future titles. And after a while, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm just... If I was with the gallery, yes, I have to title it, but I'm not. I'm selling it myself now, and I just don't do the titles. So, okay, let's see, let's see. Could you suggest an iPhone holder to video myself working? Oh, I just got a new. I just got a new one for today. And what is it? Um, hold on. Oh, let me get you the box. Hold on. Okay, I literally just got a new one for today. First time I'm using it and I really like it. It's this. I don't know if you can see, but it's really, I mean, look, the whole thing fits in here so I can take it anywhere. And it's, you can do it vertically or horizontally and it even has a light if you want. I can't use a light because it will reflect in my glasses, but this is wonderful. And you just set it up and it also has one of those automatic things that you can press. So you can press that and then get it with reels and then adjust it, um, you know, edit it. But I love that one. Okay. Can I see last week's free video? Yep. Let me see. Oh, thank you to all the people that I know who are in here. And let me just, I'm going to, I'm going to answer all your questions. I'm not getting off till I see all of them are answered. <clears throat> but I want to just tell those of you who are in my Art with the Dell Academy, I'm so grateful to you. And all I want to do is have to share my knowledge, make it fun, make it simple, and cover as much as possible. Because I've been in this business for my entire life, I have created simple ways of doing things. And that's because I have a learning disability, which I didn't realize, and ADD. <laughs> All these things are good because I had to create things to make it work for me. And because of that, I've created these sim si systems that are simple. And for me to understand anything, I have, like, even, even if I'm reading a book and I want to remember things, I read the whole book then I have to go back and highlight. Then I have to go back. I mean, I have to go back over and over and over several times until I've reduced the complex concepts into bullet points, basically. And so because of that and having to do that my whole life, I've done the same thing with lots of complex things in, in the arts. You know, for color, I developed the triangular color chart. Um, I don't want to think about color or design or composition in the middle of a painting. It just is distracting. I'm on a flow. I don't want to do that. So I've created these takeaways and shortcuts, which have helped me tremendously that I can just grab and go. They're on the table. Let me try this. Let me try that. The painting guides and all these things. So for those of you who are in the Academy, and I love you, I love you, I love you. And for those who are interested, who are not, take a look at 
the Art with Adele Academy. If you're at all interested, it opens next week from the tw- Monday the 24th through the 28th, and it's $30 a month, and this is the last time it's going to be $30 a month. And I have to say, I've also done a lot of research on the membership thing, and part of my philosophy in this and also when I sell my work is I want to have it at the best, lowest, most affordable price I can. And this is our membership or my membership. um, The Academy is less than almost all other that I know of out there memberships. And I know its value just because it's more inexpensive than a lot of them doesn't mean it has less value. It is rich with value. And just like when I, my paintings, when I got out of the galleries and they double the, the price of the, of the paintings, I felt bad because my paintings started to go for ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And it's like only 1% of the population can first off go to a gallery and then afford something like that. So I wanted to reach, how can I reach the other 99% and just have people who enjoy work in their homes? So that's when I pulled out, brought all my prices down. Most of my friends who are artists said, you can't do that. And I said, this is what's meaningful to me. So this is what I'm going to do. And people were so thrilled that they got a painting from me for a much lower rate than I used to sell them. So that's my, that's my thing on that. Um, did I answer the question? <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Oh, Lauren, thank you. Recent divorce too. Your inspiration. <clears throat> Oh, son with CF. I know about CF. My daughter-in-law, who's married to my son with diabetes, has CF. Um, So basically, having children with a life-threatening chronic illness is the most important thing. I mean, I'm getting chills now because it taught me any time I did anything, it's like nothing mattered but their health nothing. Like, did this mistake matter? Oh my God, it's only a painting. Yes, I want it to be the best it can be and I want to have fun with it, but nothing else matters. It's been a challenge and they are still my top priority. Um, There have been a lot of scary moments and times and I'm ready at any moment to drop everything and go help them. But right now, they're in good shape. So anyway, my heart goes out to you. I know those diseases. And if you have a child, if you're a parent or grandparent, please be grateful if you just, if you have children that, and grandchildren who don't have any health concerns, it is major. It is major. So just be grateful for that. I keep reminding my children who have my, none of my grandchildren have anything Um, serious. And so I said, just be happy for that. That's the bottom line. Oh, let's see. What frame did you use? So the work does not stick to your art. Oh, okay. Mm. The frame, I just get it from Blick. It's like, and you put the the thing behind. Um, Let me go see if I have one. I do have one, but you can't have it on Blick. Um, Let me go get it. Okay, here we go. This is it. And I like I like wider frames. You know, I like this. I don't want one like really thin. The only time I want the thin is if I have a really big painting. But look, see, here's the side and this is the back. And so you would just pop it in. Now this doesn't have a backing. So that's why it's inexpe- or reasonable that you can pop it in here like this like this. And when I had an open studio in New Orleans, what I did is um, I actually just, I didn't want to go to the expense of finishing up all the frames, you know, in the back and do all that because they might not even want that frame. So what I did is I just taped this in here so they could see it like this. And, um, and then I actually sold them like this and they took it. I said, if you want it in the frame, then you just take it and get the back finished. And if you don't want it in the frame, then it just pops out. That's what I learned from my open studio. So, okay, let's see. Oh, this is so much fun. 
<laughs> you all are so sweet. Go for it. And, you know, especially now, there is so much in the world where it's just fighting and disagreeing and serious health things with COVID. And uh, it just the energy feels so combative. And I just can't even look at it. It really affects me, my physical things. So I don't even look at the news. Um, I just want to look at art and anything that makes me happy. That's why I love going on social media and look at the reels that make me laugh and smile. A lot of them are um, <laughs> about little children because kids are so funny. They don't know what they're doing. So anyway, that's my two cents. Go for it. Life's too short. Your inspirational motivation. Can you do this more often? Oh, your inspirational motivation. So I'm going to do more of these if you all want. I just love it because I love to do, yes, just for you. Your record, mom, is it doctors? I would love for her. Oh, Leah. Hey. I love you. Love you. Energy stuff. Stockholm. Hey. I'm Dutch. I'm from the Nordic countries. Academy and new too. Understanding design is my greatest challenge. Robin. Well, I'm so glad you're in the Academy because um, I constantly am upgrading and helping design the Academy so that is the easiest way for you to learn. So any, first of all, anyone who's in the Academy, they know they can write me anytime, tell me what they'd like to add, what works for them, what's difficult for them, so I can rearrange things. Um, actually, just so you know, in the Academy, I've come up recently with, with Anne's help, we designed um, Roadmap to Success, a Roadmap to Success. So it's up in the resource section. I put it up yesterday. And it's wonderful. It's going to take you, we're going to start with, um, before we didn't have like start here or you can do this out of the other, but as we now have 120 videos and we have a section on design, a whole thing on design. And I have one of my shortcuts <laughs> is scale. Again, I can't think of all those things. And I did so much research around trying to, again, bring the elements of design and composition and color to its basic and then ha create something that's just like a little nugget that you can take with you or that you think about while you're painting and then practice that over and over. And then again, so much of it is practicing, but for, as a beginner, if you train yourself this way, then you will keep that way throughout. And so I've retrained myself because I would get frustrated and so anxious about being in the middle of a painting and like, oh, I wanted a blue, but I didn't know what blue to use. So I took my time, got away from the flow, mixed on palettes. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. And that's how I came up with the tri triangular color chart, which those in the academy, I hope you know about. And so you can basically take these color charts, which have 60 colors on each one that you do, and you can see exactly, well, I want that color. Well, that means, okay, I use this blue and this whatever it is and mix a little bit of white. So you can know exactly how to mix them. And I came to do that because I struggled. I didn't want to struggle like that. So, and just so you know, these little... They're not little, actually. They're pretty big. But these unique things are not anywhere else. They're no other class, nowhere else, because I created them. And so those are the shortcuts. The scale method of design, the, the, um, the triangular color chart. Also, um, there's heart, which is the composition one. Um, and so they're little basic things that can help you succinctly understand in each one of these areas. So let's see, understand design. Yeah, so design. Um, let's see, my paint palette pieces in a collage. Also using a footprint of granddaughter. Oh, yes. Do I glue them onto watercolor paper? Just use, ta let's see. I collage and use my grand. Well, it, way back when my kids were little, I actually would take a lot of their, you know, I'd have the stacks and stacks and stacks of their drawings and everything or paintings, even if it was just a little mark on the side, and I would tear them off and use those as collage. And they're wonderful. Now I have a whole stack. 
<laughs> on my grandchildren's things. So I'm never out for that. And and it's great if you want to collage those in a painting. And let me tell you this. This is a funny story. I got a commission from a doctor in, um, oh, I've forgotten where where he was, Charleston, Nashville, ten, somewhere. And um, he had a big space. It was a 48 by 60, and it was in a, um, a living room. No, it was, I think it was a dining room. Anyway, he wanted to, he saw that, he knew that I did that. So he sent me a couple of pieces from his, his son to have in there, and he wanted a photo of him in there. So he took a photo. Um, he's, he's, I downloaded it. I changed it into black and white, or you could change it into what, uh, you know, a color one, but then I went over it. I didn't want it to just jump out at you. And that is in his painting and he loved it. So feel free and use writings, um, pay, you know, marks that every, and someone else did, whether it's a loved one or your children or anything special. Um, because it really means art, what we produce is really about meaning. It really, and it's about bringing beauty into the world. You know, it's like if you see, if one of your favorite colors, you just, when you walk into a store, say you're walking into a clothes store, which I rarely do, but I might this afternoon, <laughs> and you, you scan the place, you're immediately drawn to something with, oh, I love that color. I'm going for that. So you have favorites, which means you have your own style. We all have our style. Just look in your closet and look around your house. So those are definite things that, that are already there. Let me see if I see, do you provide feedback? If so, is there a play? Yes, I provide feedback, not intensive feedback, because I have a mentoring program. And the mentoring program, I work one-on-one -on -one with people for eight weeks and um, I do anything they want. And um, and so we, we go through their paintings and we talk about their paintings. I do give feedback on anything that's posted in the private Facebook group because it's not extensive though. You know, um, and just so you know, so many people say, what should I do next? Here's this. I don't know what to do. Well, the thing about that is any feedback that you get from somebody else is what they would do. And if you ask 10 people, what would you do to this painting? They're all going to say something different. So instead of that, I would say, this is what I encourage my mentees to do. I'm like, okay, take a look at this. There must be something in here that's bothering you. What is it? Is it the color? Is it the design? Is there an area? And start there the, and you decide because that way you will start to develop your problem solving skills um, because it's your decision. And so, yeah, just ask yourself when you look at it, what's bothering me? What's not working? Is it an area? Is it the whole piece? So that's the first thing is to decide for you to decide what part of this that is bothering me. And then just listen to your intuition. Then try it and exercise your problem solving skills. Uh, because actually, a long time ago, when I had a studio, um, I did not want to be in a studio space with a lot of other artists because I didn't want their feedback because I didn't want to rely on their feedback. I wanted to just work through it and learn my problem solving things on my own because that was my decision. So I actually rented a studio space in an office building. Everyone else, there was a professional office building and I had a tiny little studio and I covered the walls and covered the floor so I could paint in there, but I didn't want anyone else coming in to give me feedback. But if you, you know, but I do with, and I tell that exact same thing to people who are in my mentoring program. Well, before I tell you my feedback, what is it? I want to teach you how to solve that for yourself. So, okay.